human physiology doesn't adapt well to space and things start failing. The body, the bones begin to leach out uh, minerals that it thinks it doesn't need in a microgravity environment. It's got to be replaced. We're learning about problems in the eye and the vision. Your muscles sort of atrophy. Your nose is congested, you feel like you've got a cold. So the physical challenge of getting to Mars is going to be fun, right? You've been in a zero-gravity environment for some eight months, which is like being in bed for eight months. Suddenly you'll have this frenzy of fighting physics to slow down, to land on the surface. Your coordination, your musculature, your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, all of that is all of a sudden under a gravitational load. You actually have to keep working hard such that when you land on a surface like Mars, you can recover quickly and begin to work. Radiation's a problem anywhere outside of a strong magnetic field. So if you're on Earth, you're fine. Uh, if you're in low Earth orbit, like the International Space Station is, you're still fine. But if you're heading to Mars, now you've got a problem. Right now, there's two sources of radiation that we're going to have to deal with. One of them is called GCRs, which stands for Galactic Cosmic Rays. They're tiny little particles that are moving very, very fast, like, you know, approaching the speed of light kind of fast. The other kind of radiation is solar radiation. And they're fast moving particles, but they're not nearly so fast as the GCRs. The longer you spend exposed to that, uh, you, the higher your cancer risk. We are uh, like pre-programmed to be predisposed to hang out with other humans. So being very, very far away from civilization is scary to us. The loneliness of being uprooted, not only from your world, but from every, anyone who you're truly close to is probably a terrible thing. There are a series of very dynamic events separated by long periods of nothing happening. Spacecraft is this monotonous, uh, gray and tan. I almost wondered why NASA just used that kind of pukey beige color for everything. They've got to stay together in a tiny spaceship for months and months, then hang out in a tiny habitat for months and months. And so it's a form of human sacrifice, but not in the pointless way but really in the service of something much greater.